Hey everyone, I'm Bill. I'm with Calimoto TV. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to ANS Motorcycles here in Sacramento, California. Today we are on the 2020 1250 RT. Now this is one of the very first bikes last year I reviewed as 2019. So there hasn't been much change to this bike. A few accessories, a few new color options, but let's get on the 2020. Let's get it out on the road and see how I enjoy the new 2020 over the 2019. What's up everyone? All right, we are chasing the sun today, but uh, we are on the 2020 R1250 RT. This is the new color. So outside, in the, in the showroom, this thing kind of looked green, but outside it kind of looks gray. So just, uh, and some of the new trim. So on the bags, they added this chrome strip um, from at least the 2019 um, that I rode last year. But we still have the uh, 1250 with the shift cam technology. And let's see, I always gripe, I always gripe about the shifters on these bikes. This one in the GS at low revs has given me some kind of clunkiness. So let's see how this is. Talk about brand spanking new. Six miles, baby, six miles. Oh, there's a lot to go over on this bike. Bogna is on a Ducati 797. And I just came off of, I just came off that uh, Triumph Rocket 3. If you guys haven't seen the video for that thing, Make sure you go and watch that video because that bike surprised me quite a bit. So if you're a cruiser style, that bike is whoo. And my understanding is BMW is coming back out with something. So uh, stay tuned, baby. Stay tuned. All right. Let's get this big beast out on the road. All right. So... Of course, the comfort on these RTs are very nice. They're very comfortable. Saddle style kind of seat. Kind of big. Um, kind of sliding a little bit forward a little bit. So you're kind of at a little bit of an angle. Huh. A little interesting. Let's get our wind screened up. <laughs> Why not, right guys? All right, so first, let's talk about the elephant in the room, BMW. I'm assuming BMW has some new designs for the RT coming up because they, they have not redesigned the RT to have the TFT. I believe outside of the R9T racer, which clearly won't ever get a TFT, everything else has a TFT. So I'm not sure why the RT hasn't gotten one. I'm assuming the restyle's coming and they'll change that. So uh, stay tuned. But 2020, we still have the old, uh, the old uh, analog gauge cluster. And of course, over here on the left, we have all of our speaker system, our stereo system and whatnot. And a couple glove boxes up in the front with our speakers up in the front and a power outlet over here to the right. You can charge your phone out of that power outlet or you can uh, plug your gear in. So if you've got heated gear, you can plug that straight in there. And we're in road mode. So I'm gonna try to get this thing in sport because the throttle seems a little, not so much. So let's get changed in mode. Dynamic, rain, road, let's go dynamic. And we're in dynamic, which should uh, waken up the throttle response. 
and we are probably stiffening the suspension I'm assuming yep there we go So we've got our cruise control over here, uh, our standard cruise control where we've got the on and off button. Now I will tell you in the past, when I've ridden BMWs, my S1000RR, I've had this cruise control on and I've accidentally hit that cruise control and not knowing, go to engine brake and it's not braking. So for you BMW owners, obviously you guys probably know better, but for you new BMW owners or potentials, Make sure you got that turned off and clicked over to the left because you can accidentally hit that. And of course we got our windshield here, up and down, hazard lights, blinkers, horn. And then we have our menu button here which will take us through our jog dial so we can go in dynamic road or dynamic suspension. And then we can roll through here and look at our tire pressures, 38, 44. And we've got a stopwatch, not sure. Uh, travel times, our dates, oil levels, and voltage levels, and we can turn that off, or we can scroll that back up, and let's go into something like uh, our range consumption, so let's go range, and then if you push and hold to the right, nope, uh, excuse me, up into consumption, that's our instant and this is our average there we go push and hold it resets it so let's go into range and set that so now we've got our range up here and then of course we've got the tripometer which works here on the jog dial which don't really care about so hit that diamond Heated hand grips, heated seats, audio, and back to our main menu. And then of course over here you have, looks like you've got your lock button on and off and your mode button. So it doesn't look like there's a, a heated hand grip. You would have to go into menu, 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 Jesus BMW, and then jog dial this up to turn it on. So you've got five levels of heated hand grips. Menu again, seat heater, five levels up and back down. Menu again, takes us to our audio. Menu again, takes us to our main menu. So uh, the menu here and jog dial takes you through the different uh, menu settings, okay? Now, the, obviously all BMWs are equipped with the uh, GPS system. The GPS system is available as an add-on. Sometimes dealerships throw them in, so depending on uh, what dealership you're at, you might be able to work in a GPS system. But I know that the new TFT displays have the Bluetooth system, and with the Bluetooth system, you can connect to the GPS and phone, so uh, that's quite nice to be able to have. I'm not sure if this, I didn't see this in the system, so. Now, I wanna talk about this shifting because the shifting is clunky. And I, I don't care what anybody says, I don't care about your comment down below because I've ridden these bikes multiple times and I know that there's people out there that own these bikes, but I'm telling you from first to third gear, for whatever reason, only in the RT and the GS, it's clunky. I don't know why. So this is a perfect opportunity for me to shift down into second. And when, so let's get on it. And I shift into third, there's a clunk. There's a clunk. It's not a smooth shift. And the BMW S1000's got a smooth shift. Some people are like, oh, the quick shifters are meant for high revs and whatnot. The, the quick shifter should be designed to be for all revs. It is on the uh, BMW S1000. And the 1250 motor on the RS version shifts fine. I don't know. 
don't, I don't know. It, the shifting thing just, it bothers me on why it's so clunky. First to second and second to third on the 1250 RT and GS. I, it, and I've ridden multiples. So I don't know, but uh, uh, there's a lot of people that own these that say, no, 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 you've got to ride it like this. You've got to ride it like that. So I know a lot of my reviews, guys, this is, I'm, I'm a first, this is like a first time ride, right? So what I'm trying to give you guys is a nice review of somebody just hopping on these bikes that's not familiar with it to give you guys what an expectation is for this bike, okay? I lost Bogdan back there at the light. <laughs> Sorry, babe. So the RT1250 shift can technology, um, you know, it's got great power. Uh, you've got the nice torque down at the low end. And then of course you've got the horsepower towards the high end. So that's very, very nice. So generally, I mean, this is just a great, this is, this is Chuck's favorite bike. Chuck, favorite bike? Absolutely, Chuck loves this bike. <laughs> he loves this bike. Um, I'm not a fan of it. I think I would probably, you know, it is a little bit heavy up top. Um, it's not as heavy as I remember it as kind of a top feel. It's kind of, uh, it has got more weight up on the top. The GS is also top heavy, but not quite as top heavy as this thing. So um, this has got a little bit of, a little bit of weight. Now, uh, when I, when I had said this before and I talked about the Grand America, the Grand America just weight distribution is just all the way through the bike where this is, you know, you've got all the weight up top where that bigger Grand America bike has more motor down there and just more below. So the weight distribution is better where this has got a lot more weight up top. Chuck, You're right. that is, my favorite is it your favorite bike? Yes, it is. Let me ask you a question. Do you, because you, you ride these all the time, do you feel that shifting from first to second and second to third with the quick shifter is a little clunky? From first to second, yes, but as you go second to third, third to fourth. It gets less and less and less. It, yeah. But it is, I'm not tripping, right? Oh. A lot of the viewers, they think that I'm not riding it fast enough or whatever, and I just kind of got on it and it still was kind of clunky. It can be a little clunky in first to second or second down to first. And that's in GS's, the GS as well, right? right? Have you ridden the RS? Yes. Smooth, right? Yes. Butter? Better smooth. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I think it'd be the same, but it's not. Yeah, and that's what it, that's what I always have been saying. So, all right, I'm not imagining. I'm not imagining Every things. Horse Every horse is a little bit different, and but by the same token, as it gets some mileage, it'll probably smooth smoothen out. out. Well, there you guys go. The 2020 1250 RT. You know anything? You know if the 2021 redesign? I don't know anything about the 2021. All right. Well, I'm assuming 2021 we've got something new, but we've got obviously we've got our uh, fog lights up front uh, If you guys didn't notice when I got off the bike the windshield automatically goes down Which is really nice. It kind of folds down automatically and then when we turn on the bike It might go into a last setting mode um, Maybe not <laughs> so There's our 1250 RT not my cup of tea but uh, a beautiful bike to say the least. BMW's always made a beautiful looking bike, but for whatever reason, this shift can technology on this 1250 tuned is slightly different. But we're back here at ANS. Thank you guys for sticking around. Make sure you hit that thumbs up. Make sure you comment down below. Uh, I apologize that I don't love this bike as much as you guys. Let me tell you, it's a good bike. It's just not my cup of tea. So leave me a comment down below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, but thanks guys. We'll see you next video. Bye-bye.